frees up some items for other people. It's been a while since I actually went through the uh, the item section, made sure that everyone had a bit of everything. Everybody gets a swindler. You get a swindler, and you get a swindler. There's a swindler under her chair. Swindler under his chair. Actually, uh, Gore Bogorov doesn't need uh, anything but buffs goblins. So, we've got a nice bit of armor for our, our orc and a weapon. That's in Azag's army. Let's get him Foe Seeker. Which, uh, from one bloodied lifeless corpse to the next, this one is always looking for the next adversary to best. Gives us some move of speed and extra vigor comes back over the course of some time. There are those who wish nothing more than to be at the heart of battle, seeking foes to vanquish. That's our boy. Let's get some more uh, weapon strength on our goblin. Pretty mighty for a goblin. Azag will now uh, recharge his winds of magic a bit faster. Oh, the reserves come back at 0 0.1 per second. If you are casting a spell, you get more reserves. Cool. Yep, uh, spellcasters who practice death magic can channel the life force of foes into their spells. And we got a bit of money! Yay! Focus that money into some of our regions that might be attacked. Beach Haven can do with the extra defenses. So can Naganhof. That's kind of killed off the money already. Ooh. We got Skavens coming in hot. No, you failed, failed. Down goes our money as we recruit another lord. Ragger, when you're clearly better than all the others. You need to shout the loudest so everyone else knows you're the barest. Ouch, my cash. And let's get him like a couple of orcs to flank him. Some of the right proper lads that he trusts. What was the situation this turn? Still just got the one. So this is the same turn that I already looked. Our new lord has an inspiring presence and improves to boys. And when he gets to it, he's going to have something else. Hmm. I think he's going to have better riders.
Yeah, that'll do. Oh, I left a bit prematurely, it seems. Okay. Let's try and fight this off, shall we? Looks like he's deployed into three different groups, looking at the mini-map. I like the idea of uh, letting them in here a bit, into a tower. Boys. So I put some orcs half across this point. You know, I say half, but not really. Backed up by some goblin archers. And of course the tower. That's, uh, that's group one to try and fight off three enemies. Over here. Again, we're going to let them uh, get indoors a little bit. But then fight under a tower. Arch back up. So that's a group. So we have our five versus their uh, four and my tower. Okay. And then we're going to go overkill on this side against the faction leader and his warrior priest ally. And we're going to have absolute carnage over this way, hopefully. So we'll put the, the Wolf Riders here to come around the back. Even though they're not very good at that or anything else. They'll probably charge into the back and die. Uh, if we make this battle happen a little bit more indoors, once I get enough uh, additional supplies for another tower, we'll plop that in there. We'll have the goblins take the hits first, because we trust them ever so, and then we'll have the, uh, the orcs come in afterwards. You know, once we give the goblins their day. And I think that's, that's my genius plan on how this maybe might sort of work, perhaps, but if not, then don't blame me. So which battle are we likely to be looking at first? I kind of deployed them all equally far back. Maybe that's that's the longest wait. 